instead of sail Croatia, it'll be sail Kazakhstan. It'll be boatloads of drunken Australian 20 year olds pulling up to port, vomiting on themselves, destroying everything. G'day cobbers, right on. Heading down, merry little walkway to a place that you probably maybe didn't even know existed. But here we are, the Caspian Sea. Let's go for a little down, let's go down to the water's edge, but I'm hanging for a beer. So, um, you know, this got a few little restaurants. Some of them look a bit mm, closed down, but I'm hearing music over here, so that's a good sign. This is really nice. I um, I I didn't know what to think of coming to Aktau. I thought that Aktau was my only reason for coming here. Really, was to try to catch a boat across the Caspian Sea. Azerbaijan is straight over there. So I was going to try to do that, but it's been a few hurdles in doing that, and we'll talk about that later. But. But here we are. So I've come here anyway because I thought, bugger it, why not? Let's go check out the eastern coast of the Caspian Sea. Look, there's everybody's out here swimming, having a, having a lark. Oh, it's lovely. So the flight into here and then the, the airport's about 400 miles away in the middle of the bloody Kazakh steppe. So kind of get a bit of a sense of of where Aktau is and it was quite unusual because you're just sort of passing camels just walking across the steppe and you're like shit because I guess we're not too far from Turkmenistan here uh, and the deserts that are just a little bit south of here so it really just felt like and looked like more of a, just a flat featureless desert terrain uh, than anything else uh, and then you start coming down to the town and there's a few newer buildings down here but sort of further back where uh, an odd mix of Soviet apartment blocks um, it was all just it felt weird it, I guess it felt like maybe what Dubai would have been like before it really kicked off it just feels like a town that's just in the middle of the desert with nothing around <laughs> Um, on a beach that sort of that's nice-ish I guess um, it's just that they haven't really got the oil and, and Aktau is and a lot of the centers here essentially here because there's a lot of uh, oil reserves there's a lot of uh, I think it's gas um, plants and things like that going on uh, but the money obviously that Dubai's got it is <laughs> nothing compared to what they've got here but um, well, here we are. So yes, the Aktau's just got an interesting feel about it. It's kind of just perched on the middle of the Caspian, surrounded by nothing for hundreds of kilometers but desert and camels. Righto. Here we are with the holiday makers of Kazakhstan. Oh, did you ever know that Kazakhstan, you could just come for a beach holiday to Kazakhstan? Far out. done with uh, walk along the beach there's quite a few places along the beachfront here so you just gotta just pick and shoot don't you just find one and uh, this is uh, this is a good enough as any to start so let's get a peeva look at the dance floor oh, is this is gonna get hectic later it's Friday night holy dooly oh, what's it gonna go on oh, oh I see beer yeah let's get a peeva Okay. The Dome, that's what they should call this club, the Dome Club. Ah, okay. Ah, what have we got? Got some Bremen, bit of German. Oh, I haven't heard of this one. Oh, we got a Pilsner. The Czech beer, I think this is a local one. Okay, I might go have a seat and get someone's attention. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Dobrovice, Dobrovice. 
Uh, should I just take a seat or yeah, get a beer? Piva? Piva, da. Piva, da? Da, one piva? What do you have you got on tap, all four of them? No. Sveja Gushka. Ah. Razimoy. None of them. No. Ah. Oh, okay. okay. It's going to take a little bit of sussing out. <laughs> They're not going to win any awards for service here, but we got there in the end. <laughs> it's funny, like, <laughs> you stand there and go, can I have one piva? One piva? There's a beer tap here, and you get nyet, nyet. I'm guessing that they don't want you to just walk up the bar and order a beer because then you come down here. Then after 10 minutes, eventually a waitress will decide to come and serve you. <laughs> and then you go, one piva. And then they go off and you see them pour a beer from the very tap you were just pointing at. So <laughs> yeah, that's the fun part of travel, isn't it? You never quite know what the heck's going on. <laughs> how, how, how have I ended up here? <laughs> so we can now add Kazakhstan and the Caspian Sea to watching the sunset at a beach bar, having a few peevers. So uh, I reckon that's worth another. Cheers. Nostrovia. Well, would you have a look at this place? Now this is a little bit, uh, a little bit fancier, isn't it? Got myself a lovely big beer. Let's see if we can get the sun behind that. Can we? No, oh, no, nah, it's not going to work. We'll just do some circle work. Yeah! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Day toot here and uh, Jackie got involved in a few too many pivas and wodkas last night a little bit of a party time was going on over here somewhere so I'm a little bit late late off the mark I thought this was a restaurant but it's actually a little uh, hotel so I've walked in here go oh there's some food there's some water and I was like oh can I just take a seat and they're like yeah no worries, you can take a seat. <laughs> They're looking at me like, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's not a restaurant. <laughs> so anyway, but I managed to like, so I don't know if this is their private jetty, but I'm walking on it anyway. So um, thank you, hotel slash restaurant. So the best way to start a day, if you're hungover, is to jump in the water. Jeez, it doesn't, it's not, it's not got the most delicious smell. I'm guessing it's this green fudge that's all over it. I didn't think, I guess, I mean, the Caspian Sea is a large, very large body of water, but for whatever reason, I didn't think it'd be tidal, but it's tidal. It's clearly low tide now. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go that way, I think. So check this out. What I thought was a hotel, but a restaurant, because there was pictures of food, and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. <laughs> it confused my poor hungover brain. It's actually like a private room food place. So you book out like a little, like a little room, with little doors, there's heaps of them, it's like, and then, <laughs> And that's it. It's like a brothel for food. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it. A little food brothel. But you're gonna pay for it, I guess. Food is a whore. The lighthouse. That was the place of all my problems today. <laughs> that DJ spinning sets. Hello. Hi, how are you? Everyone's, he looked a little bit rough as well. <laughs> Maybe everyone was at the lighthouse last night. It was a party zone going on there. Just promenading along the esplanade. It's like some kind of a water park. 
place here. What's going on? We've got Disneyland. Disney on Kazakhstan. Also very Tropicana. This is <laughs> interesting. The old car. Ah, the old favourite. My favourite. The spitting frog. Ah oh, yes. Many good childhood <laughs> memories of hanging around the spitting frog. Where the hell am I? Alright, this is the part of the park they don't want you to see. Fun. Hello, how are you? God, I don't know where I am. What's going on? <laughs> I've walked into like a really bad dream. By and large, there's, like, there's a lot of really old looking, I guess 1960s maybe, Soviet apartment complexes um, sort of lining the shorefront. But there's a couple of new developments going up and I guess this is like, it's the role of the real estate dice, isn't it? Like if you think back in, I don't know, when, when did Dubai start really kicking off? When they first built an apartment block complex in Dubai, they would have tried to sell it to you. This will be the new place to be. And you're like, why? I mean, there's water, but it's desert. There's nothing around here. Um, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be worth something one day. Get, get in by the, while the going's good. Imagine if you did. You'd be like some bloody billionaire tycoon by now. <laughs> and it's like, like I'm seeing, there's a couple of developments around here, and you're like, well, there's oil and gas offshore here. It's got all the same things. It's a, just a vast desert with a bit of water. Is this the next Dubai? I don't know. Like, how do you. <laughs> I'm sure you could pick up one of these back here. There was like a. It's still in construction, and there's all these flash artistic impressions of what it's going to look like. Do you get in now? Is this going to be the spot? I don't know. People are out here having fun. Just a thought is all. Just an investor's thought. I do that a lot. Where I just like think, should I buy here? Is this a thing? I remember once when I was in Krakow in Poland. 10-15 years ago and I remember going on the, a walking tour the Schindler's List walking tour of Krakow took you all the places that were filmed and took you to um, the Jewish um, quarter and in the Jewish quarter was like the ghetto the Jewish ghettos it was a derelict but you know it had beautiful old buildings but it was sort of like a nothing area it still had the stigma of, of, uh, of you know, I guess ghetto era um, and, and I remember this tour guide saying, if anyone's got 10,000 bucks, chuck it in the apartment here. There's a couple of little restaurants that were sort of kicking off around the place. He said, this place in 10 years is going to be like an investor's dream. Right now it's nothing, but it'll be something very soon. Sure enough, I went back there. Uh, oh, geez, I went back there probably 10 years later. Yeah, it was. It was 10 years later. He was, he was, who was this buddy? Soothsayer, <laughs> time traveler. 10 years later, it was one of the most beautiful areas of Krakow. It had all these beautiful, fancy restaurants and cafes and bars and apartment living was clearly like, um, you know, if you'd got in there. <laughs> so you're just like, damn it. This is what Caspian Sea coast in Kazakhstan looks like. I know that most of you have probably been like burning with that sort of that thought in your minds for so long. What does it look like? You probably find it hard to sleep. Well sleep easy. No more restless nights. You now know what it's all about. I don't feel like I'm in the same country anymore. This is a whole world away from from our Marty, the, the cafes and the beautiful streets and the mountains. It's like I've just landed 
I feel like I've just landed in Africa or something like just in Senegal how did that happen have I gone through a time wormhole or something oh there's a worm seat where am I walking to what have we got oh have we got cave restaurant bars Shit, yeah okay well let's find some cave restaurant bars well now it's just taken on a whole new flair is it like I'm in Croatia now soon oh imagine that there'll just be instead of sail Croatia it'll be sail Kazakhstan it'll be boatloads of drunken Australian 20 year olds pulling up to port vomiting on themselves destroying everything and then getting off and heading off to the next cove that's the future right on good on you Kazakhstan sail Kazakhstan buy your shares now all right we're now entering the grotto well see this would be the perfect place for a bar they'll get there they just need to go on a holiday to Croatia and see how they do it there yeah imagine this if this was on the Croatian coastline woof, party time going on in this just wondering like okay they spent a bit of money with the lighting and whatnot but a park bench here this is just Oh, this is for lovers trysts isn't it this is where you you bring sweetheart There's a lot of glitter going on here celebrations sprayed on the roof it's probably not the only thing sprayed <laughs> around here okay let's get out of this this smells like sex you just you wonder whether this was sold to the people that bought into this apartment complex this was meant to be a swimming place or what i don't know i just saw a big fish jump out of it either way i'm guessing it's not met their expectations it's a nice place though it's probably was sold to the people here called it hey they're pumping water in just as i'm talking they're like oh, shit we're being filmed, we better fill it up. <laughs> but uh, it's probably like Beluga Muse or something like that. It was probably like some odd. Hey, I'm not Chinese, I speak English. <laughs> He's like, hotcha, 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 ha. Uh, yeah, that's not how I speak. Is it? Is that how I speak? Hotcha, hotcha. No. There's probably some beluga whale in here captured off the northern coast of Russia brought here sadly just swimming around for the entertainment and every now and then they pump a little fresh water in but they got a little uh, plaque here just here on the coast and here's some ancient uh, it says that it's the sunhead deity I don't know if you're able to really see it um but yeah so there's yeah actually now i got up close you can see like little legs coming down there's the arms and it's got like a big intricate head and then over here there's like a double humped camel inscribed up into it So this boardwalk just carries on and on and on. This is a bit of a headland here, it goes around. But um, here we go. This is where the Kazakhs come for their summer holidays. Oh, it's crazy, I did not expect this. So I mentioned that geographically, when I was in Oral, I crossed over 
the western bank of the Oral River and entered Europe. Well, I've come back into Asia here. So there's three major pieces of geography that uh, kind of delineate Asia from Europe. One of them is the Ural Mountains in Russia, which run north-south. And then you've got the Ural River, which runs north-south, straight out of that. And then you've got the giant Caspian Sea, which is also very much just runs north-south. So everything on the eastern side of the Ural Mountains, River and Caspian is Asia. Everything on the western side of the Ural Mountains, River and Caspian is Europe with the exception of well you're going to kind of have to draw a line above uh, the Middle East that like you've got Iran and, and whatnot uh, and even Azerbaijan and Armenia considered as Asia and you've got Turkey it's considered as Asia as well so you've got a bit of a I'll try and put a little map up to explain it because it gets a little bit funny in your mind when you're like well how am I entering Europe but then you enter Asia again and you're going to go through Asia for a long way until you get to the Bosphorus Sea crossing over um, from Istanbul. So it's a bit of a wacky concept. And here we are. This is where the Kazakhs, probably a lot of Russians as well, very easily connected to Russia, come here for their summer holidays. <laughs> Man, this is a sausage festival. It's not a chicken sight. Bit of jetty jumping. Yes, that's the way. Next. Oh, they, they listen to me. <laughs> Caspian Sea Jetty Jumper. I was in Australia. There's no way you catch me dead jumping in at Bangladesh or India. Come up with a turd in your mouth. But, uh, lovely. Or conversely, try this where I live in Australia and you'll come up in a crocodile's mouth. <laughs> G'day guys, well, I'm here at the airport in Aktau, sitting on these lovely, luscious green couch covers, <laughs> it's fun. This is my last day, last, um, last hour in Central Asia, and um, what a ripper of a time it's been. I've been waiting to get, I was in Central Asia back in 2015, but only in Kyrgyzstan. Um, I was the only one I could get a visa for back then, but luckily Central Asia has now, besides Turkmenistan, has opened its doors um, and is ready for business. And uh, so, yeah, I was expecting, I don't know, I don't know what I was expecting when I came here. Maybe a bit more of a crazy, scary adventure, but it's all been very well organized i mean you guys have seen it right from the moment i got into dushanbe i was just blown away with the capital cities of like uh, tashkent and dushanbe amazing places quite modern um yeah so it sort of like uh, dispelled a few myths i guess on what this area part of the world is like you know, for so long it's been locked up 
uh, hidden away. Um, yeah, so it's sort of a lot of mystery has surrounded Central Asia. Still one of probably the the least touristed parts of the world, besides maybe like West Africa or Afghanistan. <laughs> so yeah, that was a shame I couldn't get into Afghanistan, wasn't it? So um, so now. Besides Turkmenistan, which you can't get into, they're just not issuing visas to anybody. Uh, Turkmenistan's harder to get into than, than bloody North Korea. Um, so that's a bugger that I couldn't get there. It's also a bugger I couldn't get into Afghanistan because that would have um, fulfilled a few... Yeah, there's just left a couple of little gaps in my um, quest to go through all of the stands, I guess. So, um, yeah. Now I'm off to the Caucasus, off to Azerbaijan. So um, I'll see you guys in a new part of the world. What fun are we going to have? All right, Dobre noche.